What is up everybody, Arctic Platypus here, and I'm bringing you a new video about 7 Days to Die updates, and this one is the Alpha 15 official update. Big update, actually. I mean, of course, all of the big major updates, like if it's a whole number with no decimals, it's going to be a pretty damn big update. So, Alpha 15 um, focuses on a lot of different things. It doesn't really have like one central thing that it focuses on but it adds a lot of new stuff it's pretty damn cool um so the first thing i want to talk about is just kind of the world what they did to the world so nava's gain and both and a uh, random world gen as well um both saw quite a few changes so in nava's gain and random world gen there is a new distant terrain feature so you can see the land way in the distance like miles away which is really useful so you know where you are in relation to the rest of the world without having to look at your map. I mean, but you don't know where stuff is. You can't see like the points of interest. You can just see the terrain far away. So if, you, if there's like a biome you want to go to and it's far away, you can see it in the distance if you go on top of a hill or something. And it's just, it's, just, it's a lot more immersive. It's a great experience. I mean, you can see that in the uh, footage. It looks really awesome. And they figured out a way to do it where it does not hinder your performance really at all. And that's great. Um, and in Nava's game, there's also a lot of new points of interest, which I think most of them go over into random world gen as well. I think you'll see a few of them in the background. Um, that's really all, all I want to talk about for the worlds. There's a lot of other stuff to cover here. Um, let's go on to the journal tip system. So this thing, I think in the past, it still, it always has shown you these tips about the game, or I don't know if it always has, but it has shown these kind of tips in the past, but now it records them in a journal, which is useful. Maybe you've kind of forgotten how to do something. It might be in your journal. You look back, you're like, oh, okay, that's pretty useful. And it, it's kind of cool. It's kind of small, a small feature, but it's pretty nice. And now here's a kind of a big system that they've implemented into the game, which is a trader and an economy system. So the traders can appear in random world and, um, novice game equally, um, and the traders are NPCs, and then the economy system kind of has to do with, um, like, player-to-player -player interactions and sales and stuff, which is kind of interesting. So let's start with the player-to-player -player stuff. You can uh, rent out vending machines, which is really cool, actually. As you can see, you can change the price on the items you add, and um, you have a certain amount of time, in-game time, that you rent the vending machine for and i don't even think you have to have real players buy your stuff it'll actually pretend like there's some npcs that are coming around and buying your stuff which is interesting but um i've never actually gotten to use this so far in multiplayer or anything but it just seems really cool it seems like a nice feature and i'm sure a lot of people are going to be really happy about that and let's go on to the trader system and the vending machines. Um, so the vending machines are kind of like the traders, but just they're kind of way toned down. So the vending machines, you can buy usually just drinks, I think. It's just um, beverage vending machines that they've added so far. Um, and you can... Actually, no, sorry, wait. Oh yeah, no, it, it's just it's just, uh, just beverage vending machines. Those are the only ones you can find. Um, and they have just a lot of drinks. That's pretty cool. You, if you need some goldenrod tea on the fly, you can just kind of pay some Duke tokens, which is the currency of the game. And there you go, you have a goldenrod tea, which is pretty nice, or whatever drink is in the vending machine, and it gets restocked too, which is kind of cool. Um, and then to the traders. So the traders are kind of vending machines on steroids. They have like a ton of different stuff. They have guns, books, um, materials, just everything you might want. And there's five different vendors, uh, traders, different models. So in random world gen, you're not going to always see the same guy, which is a good variation that they've added. I think that's awesome. And they have voice lines for all of them. They're all, yeah, they're all voiced, which is pretty cool. Currently, I don't think they're fully done because, um, I mean, not the voices. The voices are done, but the whole thing is like, you can't, the land is fully protected. You can't, like, battle them or anything. You can't piss them off. If you just stay too late, you'll get teleported out of their land. So it's, it's, it's a little bit interesting in that respect. But um, I think it's overall pretty pretty cool, pretty well done. 
pretty useful too if you're lacking some supplies come across those guys have a lot of dukes and you can sell them stuff too which is always a good feature and then let's move on to farming i didn't really get to play around much with the farming but um i've noticed the soil the way it um is like um the way it changes when you use the hoe on it is different it kind of flattens out an area rather than having little rows I, I think that's a change and then um there's also fertilizer which i don't really have any footage of but there's fertilizer which you can use to make the crops go f grow faster and there's also new crops so you can grow mushrooms yucca plant the red uh, flowers aloe and hops to make beer so that's all pretty cool and um if you're a big farmer that's definitely going to be a good feature a good few features that they've added for you um, and there's also a chemistry station that they've added to the game, which is pretty freaking cool. And this is, it's a, it allows you to make a lot of previous recipes that were already in the game, and I think some new ones. But, um, I think it, you can make them faster. And, um, it's, like, oh, it requires fewer resources, so, um, that's pretty useful as well. And for some, for some recipes, it is exclusively the chemistry station that can make those things. There's also new UMA zombies, and what this means is that you can have custom zombies, so that's not just all, like, the default models. They can actually kind of wear the clothes of, like, of the game, kind of, I think. Um, and it uses the whole player model customization thing to make the zombies, which is... Um, pretty damn cool they've added a lot of new zombies that way and they look i think better in some ways they kind of look weird but they're pretty cool and the system is going to be apparently used for um, npcs and bandits in the future which is awesome um and then the sign creation system that's a kind of a small feature you can make a sign place it on the ground and type in some text I think that's pretty cool. I've been lacking that for the whole time. Um, and then there's some other stuff that you can sort your containers, your backpacks. There's a ton of new recipes. There's new steam achievements. Um, apparently they improved the ore veins and the mining. There's now like diamonds, gold, and silver, and you can sell those. They're not really used in recipes, but you can sell them, which is kind of cool. I haven't really came across any of those yet in my mining experience, but... They're there, they exist, that's pretty cool. There's new items, a lot of new clothes and stuff, new blocks to craft. There's just a lot of new features, guys. But I think I covered the more important stuff, so if you want to look more into it, there is a link in the description of all the information you will need to know. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you want to subscribe, please do that. I'll see you all in the next video.